falling victim to imposter scams. Con artists are impersonating trustworthy people like government officials or law enforcement agents. A new Federal Trade Commission report says complaints about imposter scams surpassed identity theft for the first time. The FTC looked at more than 3 million consumer complaints. In 2016, consumers reported losing more than $744 million overall to fraud. That average is roughly a thousand dollars per victim. Anna Werner is here with the rising threat. Anna, good morning. Well, good morning. You get a call from someone at a police department who says you missed jury duty and you owe money. That call might just worry you, as it did a man from California who was told if he didn't pay up, there'd be a warrant out for his arrest. Richard Tanner says the call took him by surprise. I literally was about to hang up when they said, are you at this address? And it was my uh, P.O. box that I've had for many, many years. The man on the other end said he was Sergeant Wade Marshall with the Sheriff's Department, and Tanner owed fines of $1,600 for failing to appear for jury duty. He immediately launched into this very polished sounding, I mean, you know, very authentic sounding speech about, um, we're calling it as a courtesy. You have several outstanding citations. Tanner told him he had served jury duty, but the sergeant gave him case and citation numbers with what sounded like police scanners in the background. He instructed Tanner to head immediately to the sheriff's department to pay up or face a warrant for his arrest. The only form of payment accepted, cash or a prepaid card called Green Dot. It was all in the guise of giving me a lot of information and he even said, do you have a pen and a paper? You might want to write this down. The call went on for nearly 40 minutes on his landline before Tanner used his cell phone to call the local sheriff's department. The first thing I said was, is there a <clears throat> Sergeant Wade Marshall? And I barely got the words out when the, the real sheriff's department said, no, it's a scam, hang up. Law enforcement would never make such a request. U.S. Marshals Service Assistant Director John Bolin says it's a growing problem nationwide. The agency recently warned consumers about these slick scammers. These scammers are extremely well-versed in the judicial process. They have frequently used real judges' names, real names of U.S. Marshals Service employees. And that's just one type of what experts call imposter scams, the most common form of fraud duping U.S. consumers. The Federal Trade Commission says in 2016, more than 400,000 people complained about impersonation fraud. Monica Vaca is FTC's acting associate director. There are probably a lot of people out there who are hearing this and saying, ha, I wouldn't fall for that. Yeah, a lot of people think they won't fall for it. Um, and a lot of people don't fall for it. But the fact of the matter is that when you get one of these calls, they sound really real. Scammers are very, very good at making you believe that you've got an emergency situation on your hands and they have a really powerful way of getting you to act on that. Well, so a couple of red flags here. Number one, the government's not going to call you. They're going to use snail mail and send you something in the mail. And by the way, of course, they don't take prepaid cards or gift cards. But, you know, 77% uh, of people get these contacts over the phone. And most of the people who are affected by this complaining are 50, age 50 or older. Yeah. Yep. And a lot of elderly people yep. fall for these scams, too. Scary, you know, your grandmother, your yeah. aunt. Yep. So the key is say, well, just send me something in the mail. And hang up. And hang up. <laughs> and hang up. There you go. Thank you, Anna.